Oh, we're six people. That's good. That's All great. right. Let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. Um, admit all. And do, do, do. If you see anybody in the waiting room, let them in if you want. Okay. <clears throat> oh, look at everybody's off video. What are you doing, people? Come on. Come on, video. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you today? We're here talking about books and publishing. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Karina. Where'd you, where'd you go? Hi, Tony. I'm eating, I'm eating dinner. As soon as I'm finished, I'll get back on camera. I'm sorry. Ah. I just didn't want to miss this, but I have to eat at the same time. <laughs> okay, good. Well, thanks for being here, you guys. Um, uh, my name's Katrina Sawa, and Lil is a good friend of mine. And uh, we're going to both introduce ourselves because some of you know me, some of you know her. Uh, some of you might not know either of us. And then, but ideally, we join forces to give this kind of a call because so many people want to become authors and we talk to them all the time, but they have so many questions. So we're here to like answer the questions, tell you the things, uh, and make sure you know, like which way is the best way to publish for yourself and where to get the resources and all the things. So Lil, why don't you give them a little intro on who you are, what you do, and then I will, and then we'll dive right in. Absolutely. I'm Lil Barkaski. I live in the beautiful town of Dunedin, Florida. I come for the weather, leave for the politics. Um, so I have to, I'm selling t-shirts. Um, so I've been a ghostwriter for quite a while. Um, that's my primary thing is ghostwriting. And over the years of doing that, uh, people wanted us to do publishing and we got pretty good at that too. So we do some, somewhat of a different style in Katrina and we publish some things she doesn't publish. But uh, our main focus is writing and, and editing and coaching people who want to write a book. That's primarily what we do. Uh, yeah, I've actually yeah. pr ghostwritten fiction even. So a little bit of all kinds of crazy stuff we do. Yeah, I like that because I don't want to ghostwrite. No, thank you. Uh-uh. Like, uh-uh. <laughs> it's hard enough just to write my own stuff. And uh, But so this is why we have so many different things that we can offer and we can share with you about. So my experience with publishing, and if you're on my email list, you would have seen my email yesterday that said my author story. <clears throat> I never wanted to become an author. I'm like, why would I sell a $20 book when I can sell a $200 thing, a $2,000 thing, or a $20,000 thing as a business coach? So, but I saw all my friend, a lot of friends way back when, when I started that were getting on stages because they had a book or on TV because they had a book. I'm like, oh, I'll use it as a marketing tool. Okay, so I use books mostly as a marketing tool. And most of my clients who work with me are writing books to help them grow their business and get clients. Um, occasionally, I will also help someone who is writing more of a fiction or a non, or, you know, but I don't focus on the fiction as much or memoirs as much as Lil would. Um, I like to do compilation books. Uh, so I attract a lot of authors who have communities and want to help their clients become authors. And so I help them with books. Um, <clears throat> like like written in her own words is uh nine authors who told their transformational story so but i showed them how to monetize it with their website and really highlight them as an expert too so yeah so i love doing compilation books i have 20 books i have two of my own um and i started publishing because it was just cheaper to do it myself than like to go pay somebody. My first book, I paid $6,000 for a publisher and she didn't help me with any coaching. And so I was kind of lost and it took me three years to get it done. So I'm like, oh, I can do. And then the second book that I wrote, it took me, I mean, I spent under a thousand dollars and got it professionally done. So, I mean, let's, let's rock it and get this book done. So the, the reason this call is like, write your book now is because you can't wait any longer. <clears throat> I know there's some people on the on this call like Chuck. You have a gazillion books already. I know. Like I don't know why you're here because you know how to publish a book, silly. But uh, thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> so let's start off with. We'd love to know in the chat, like, what's your? Where are you with writing a book? How many people like put have one or two or have however many in the chat if you already have a book and it's published? right? Put in the chat, have one or have five if you have books <laughs> already. I'm not putting my number. <laughs> oh, and then put like none or something, I guess. <laughs> put none if you don't have a book yet and you're working on it. Nobody's playing with me in the chat. I wrote a book, but it's not published. Okay, Tony, good. We're going to get that done. 
<laughs> I'm going to write my third. Okay. Andrea's okay. two. Yep. As you can see them. It's more in play. Oh, Chuck, you're killing me, man. You're, you're going to catch up to me soon. Six. I know. <laughs> you. I, I don't know how people focus on multiple books at one time. I'm like, oh, a single focus. I'm like, get one done at a time. That's funny. Okay. Heidi's working on it. None but working on it. Tony. Hi, everyone. None yet. This is still my head, Dion. Okay. We got to get it out of your head and on the paper, right? Okay. So <clears throat> how many of you want to have a book by the end of this year? Like you want to be like a published author, print book in hand by the end of 2023. Yes. Heidi. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else is like, I don't care how long it takes me, Tony. Okay. And First, we should talk about what is it going to do for you? Like some of you have businesses. I know some of you have a job, right? I have my third, have my third book by the end of the year. Perfect. What would you say to Lil about um, people like this, the time frame, right? Let's talk about the time frame of getting a book done. <clears throat> I, I'm a, I'm a, my dad taught me many, many things, but the, I think one of the big lessons my father always taught me was if you have a job to do and there's a guy who's doing next to nothing and another one is really busy, give the job to the busy guy because he's going to get it done. And, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we're in our company, we're get it done people. Um, I, I don't, I don't like procrastination. And at the same time, sometimes things take longer. So it depends. Um, a business book, you want to get moving. You know, you want to do business. Let's get this going. Let's get it done. Let's get it ready so that Katrina can pop it up there and publish it for you. Let's get the book on the market. Get, yeah. Let's get, while you're getting it going, let's already talk about it. Let's get speaking engagements lining up. Let's get people knowing your book is coming out. Let's get excited. Memoirs take a little longer. They can be a little painful depending on the, on the, on the memoir. We've had memoirs with people that have had very difficult lives, have gone through very difficult things. And sometimes it takes a little bit of, of, kindness and grace and time but uh really uh, we can knock a business book out with you if you're ready to write it 40,000 words in a couple of months if you put the put your time in yeah. tell me what you want done and we'll, we'll ghost write it or coach you to do it yeah it can, answer? <laughs> doesn't have to take a long time mine took three years because I was writing more of a memoir I didn't know it was a memoir at the time but it was my story but with lessons like weaved in, right? I was the Love Yourself Successful book. And um, I had a download like, okay, it's something to do with love and money and this and that, and my love life and not settling and la la la, but it didn't all download. And it was more of a journey for me. Like I had to go through a couple more boyfriends <laughs> before I could actually <laughs> get the book done because the story wasn't That's done, cool. if that makes sense. Um, and so it downloaded like one spring in two weekends. I wrote the book in four days once it finally downloaded. So I wasn't, yeah. I couldn't have put calls on the count, like block time on the calendar to write because it just wasn't coming. So for me, it was a transformational process for myself to write that book. But the business stuff, now I'm writing practical, tactical. Well, boom, I can download the content and like, you don't even, you just create the content and move. So it, I guess it depends on what kind of book you're writing. We'd love to know like what kind of book you're writing. So put that in the chat, like memoir or your story, <clears throat> a business book or system book is what I call it. Um, workbook, or, workbook, very big workbook. style for us right now. Workbooks are very book, popular. Doing a lot of those journal. right now. Right. Um, there could be a quote book, romance, fiction. Thank you. Children's Indeed. books. Right. What else? What are you guys writing? Story, life with animals, romance, daily devotion. Love devotionals. Love those. That's Beautiful. Cool. Great. Story Good. with a framework. Okay. Awesome. And so what, uh, let's business book, Tom says, okay. Compilation, prescriptive memoir. Well, that sounds complicated. Business now, personal growth in the future. Perfect, Andrea, that's the way to look at it because the business one could probably get done faster, right? So I say we do whatever one is gonna get done faster and get it out and then work in the meantime, work on the next one to get it out. Most people think I'm just gonna write one book, 
you know, no, you're going to like what you'll get addicted. Trust me, you'll get addicted to whether you'd write a chapter in a compilation book, which now I have 17 compilation <laughs> books. Lord knows I don't need any more, but <laughs> I have two more coming out this year. Why? Yeah. Because it's fun. It's a fun promotion that gives me visibility. I'm doing things with other groups of uh, speakers and authors, gives me lots more exposure and opportunities in front of new people. And, new clients. and you're, you're making more authors. You're making more people author, which is wonderful. So it's, a, it's a, a really great thing. Exactly. Or people can say that I'm an, I'm an author. That's a really good thing. I have a, I have a 70 year old woman who's putting out her first book. That's art and poetry and it's beautiful. And the cover is one of her art pieces of art. She's never had a book before. So that's really neat. It's a neat thing yeah. to do. I met a gal that was is a photographer and she's doing more of a photography book. So there's lots of different kinds of books you can do. Mm -hmm. Just make yeah. sure you're, practical with it. So what are some of the mistakes we see, first of all, with people doing their book and or trying to do it themselves, whether you do it themselves yourself or you do it traditionally, what are some of the mistakes you see either with the final product or in the process, Lil, what do you think? You know, look, we talk about coaching all the time. You're also a coach, Katrina, right? You coach people in business. You do a lot of things. It's so difficult to start a business without coaching. And for most people in the long run, if you're serious about having a book, you know it's going to elevate your speaking career, which therefore will elevate your business. Get a coach. Get somebody who keeps you accountable, who keeps reading what you're working on so you don't go astray. You know, I'm a big fan of outlining. I've written seven fiction books, ghost ghost written, seven fiction books, all by outlining the idea. Someone came with an idea to me and said, I want to write a book about this. Uh, this story compels me. I can't write. Can you write this? And I'll even completely map out the story arc. Will it change sometime? Yes. Will it be things you move from chapter to chapter? Probably. But if you have a, a clear picture from the get-go and you get a coach who can help you create that clear picture and find stories to tell, because all business books should be have some memoir version or some story comp component. You want to be, I like business memoirs, like what you did. You're talking yeah. about your business, but how it affected your life. And you're, you know, there's, there used to be life coaches and business coaches. There's very few life coaches now anymore because they realize that you can't be one or the other. You kind of have to be both. We can't live without work and we can't work without life. And that's the way it is. So the same thing applies to books. If you're going to do a business book, you, you want to have some of your life, who you are. People want to like you. They want to know you and trust you. And you'll do that in your book. So if you can tell them a little bit about the things you've gone through, how you've helped some, I don't care what your sales technique is, but if you can tell me how you took a guy who was only making $20,000 a year as a you know clerk somewhere and you taught them how to make $100,000 a year using your sales concepts and your, that's a story. Tell me that story and show me how you made that happen via what you do, as opposed to just saying, well, if you do this and this and this, you could, you know, yeah, that's boring. Stories are not. And on that yes. note, actually, people always say, well, I don't want to put all my secrets into a book because then they'll have everything and they won't hire me. And that is so false. That is not true at all whatsoever. You want to do that. People are not going to be able to take the concepts from a book and do the whole entire thing, whatever it is you're teaching. Um, there's no way. Like my business book is my 90-day training program that was $4,000 that people did with me live and that I transcribed and, you know, I edited around it and fluffed it up a little bit. Um, but that was that. You'd think, oh, why are you going to sell that for, you know, 20 bucks? Well, because people won't go do the work. There's just so many people that will come through and still hire me. So don't worry about putting too much in the book. You want it to be a really good book. Yeah. Okay. What other mistakes are there? I can, I can tell you a couple. Um, and it's more about the look and feel and the production of the book. So please don't do your own cover. I don't care if you're graphically inclined. Don't do your own cover, especially not on Canva. That's not like, and, and Amazon has all these specs and, oh, you can templates and guidelines and how to do it. And great, but you're going to spend so many hours. And if you're not a graphically designed person, your book cover is going to look like dog shit. <laughs> like seriously, or it's just not going to appeal, right? I used to come from the advertising world and I used to sell advertising in the newspaper with the, like 22 years ago, it was a long time ago, people still reading newspapers. 
And the small business owners would give me like their business card. They'd say, oh, like run this in the ad. I'm like, no, I'm not going to run your business card in the paper because nobody cares about your logo and your fax number. So like if you just don't know what's going to look good, right? So get a professional cover design. But And there's so many people out there that do this. I have people that will do it for 400 bucks and you get so many options, right? But you could spend thousands of dollars too. Either way is fine. You choose. I like, I'm a little frugal. I like to spend the money where, you know, I like to save money and have good deals, right? Frankly. Um, and then on the end, what were you going to say about the cover? No, you're so right. I mean, the balance of a cover and, and the back cover copy, don't waste yes. the back cover with your bio back there. People don't care about that. They want me a little bit about who you are, but get back there. What? Why would somebody read this book? Make sure that that's that you're telling them because that's your description. You want people to know why should I read this and what would compel me to read it. No, yeah, that's and, and make that that cover should be a work of art from from left to right. If you could throw it flat down on a piece of paper, it should look like a poster. It has to be coherent. Yeah, it's one piece of work. Your, your back cover is your marketing copy. I actually mm -hmm. recommend you write that first before you write your book. You write the back cover. What do you want the experience to be for the reader? What is that juicy overview of what you're going to put in the book? That is something that you can write first, if that makes sense to you. Um, so the back cover is the juicy marketing makes us want to buy it copy. Yeah. And if you have some really good testimonials on most of my books, I have like a quote from somebody really well known. And so I put those in prominent places on the cover. It's good to do if you can get that, if you can get that. Another mistake I see is inside the book, <clears throat> they might do an intro. You might do an intro or something where you talk about what you do, but then you don't have a lot of call to action. And maybe you, maybe it's a story or a memoir or whatever, but still at the, at the back of the book, there's an opportunity to put a couple of things about what you sell, right? So like, hey, come to my website and get my free thing. Or, hey, come to my website and check out my upcoming events. Or, hey, come to my website and check out what I do with clients. And these are all the things I help people with. So don't just put an about section, but put some marketing type pages on the end. I, I think it's for any kind of book, except for, I mean, maybe fiction. No, I don't know. But, but at the end of a fiction book, you can say, buy my other books, come to my website and get on my email list and become a fan, get in my fan club. I mean, there's always something you got to get them on the email list from the book because someone might've gifted uh, them the book. They may not have bought it on your website. And if they buy it on Amazon, that doesn't mean they're on your email list. You still got to get them into your email list if you want them to buy more books later or other things. That's huge. Would you add anything to that, Will? Um, no, I, every business book needs to have that. You know, and, and you do compilation books and every chapter needs to have that, right? It tells people, use, we use QR codes a lot that people can put the QR code in a book, which is great. And those are really great. Why not? You know, now, yeah. that, now that the phones exist the way they do, the QR code is becoming roaring back. So you could put a link tree of your QR code, but all your links in there in the back of your book uh don't waste the front on things like your um your acknowledgements put them in the back that, that was very old school people put the acknowledgements up front but remember that they can do a look inside now so you've only got a little bit of real estate there for the look inside get them right into the book if somebody goes to amazon and does a look inside they're going to want to see something about the book immediately make make sure that there's something compelling in those first five or six pages that will make them want to buy that book oh i looked inside this oh this sounds really interesting. This intro tells me all about the book or this first chapter. So they get right in there and they want to buy it. That is a great tip right there. Because I don't even do that. And that's such a great tip. Yeah. Watch those first five pages, five, six yeah. pages. Five, six is all you get. So make sure that they, you grab them by the butt. <laughs> I want this book. I want it now. You have to I know. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, it could be interesting because you could put that on Amazon, but you could still print a different version of the book so to speak hmm. right like i we don't use amazon for print obviously we don't we use them for kdp for you know for kindle but not for print so uh -huh. you can do it all totally differently and we've got to be very careful now because when they went to the app instead of having to go buy a kindle a lot of you yeah. have you how many of you bought a kindle back in the day and a buyer or whatever now you can read any book on any device by downloading the app 
well, you know, I'll use the bad, you know, the bad font of Comic Sans. <laughs> like, you know, most most people don't have that. So they've been very strict about the kind of fonts you can. It's very limited the fonts you can use for your EPUB because they want people to be able to read them. You have to be careful that blind people's software works. We had we yeah. had an incident, not our company, but a friend of ours is, whose book was un, unreadable for the blind, and uh, they went back to the company to try to get them to to do something. And the publishing company said, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> so, no, you know, you have to make sure that those things work. There's a lot of ins and outs to it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why. A really good point because yeah. most people wouldn't think that unless you are yeah. blind. Like, there's yeah, and so many people try to pick fancy fonts. You can't. You got to pick standard fonts that fit. And so this is why you don't want to design the inside of your book either and be careful o over formatting it. I've even had people give me a document for a manuscript and have they have text boxes in the middle. I'm like, oh my God, don't do that. Yeah. Like <laughs> just uh, do it <laughs> as unformatted as possible until you send it off to the person that does the inside layout. And that's yeah. something you would pay for as well. So just- And that's got to be beautiful too. It's got it to does. be really pretty. And it's got, it should be an InDesign, which is the industry standard and yeah. should be done properly. All those things are important. So, you know. All right. So I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. I want you yes. to start putting them in the chat and I'm going to have you unmute and ask them and stuff, but I want you to start thinking of your questions. We're going to cover a couple more things, but I want to make sure that we see your questions as you, and, and so hopefully you came with some, or if you just heard about this and you, you just, what kind of questions would you have to get this book done? but also published. Do you need it to be as cheap as possible because you're on a budget? Do you care? Do you want to be done, uh, published by a traditional publisher? In which case you probably need a book agent. Okay, so do you even know where to find a book agent? Do you know the resources for writing groups if you need help and accountability to actually write? So there's a lot of different things that come to play with getting a book done and actually published because sitting in your computer is not good right and just having an ebook and not a paper book is not necessarily good either i think the more we can have it where we get on zoom calls or we go to events we say hey this is my book and you should go buy it right i mean you want to have something like that so yeah. i want to you talk can't sell an ebook in the back of the room <laughs> yeah right <laughs> not gonna sell it. you can't offer the ebook it's not going to be as effective to offer an event plan or the ebook that you can maybe buy for six dollars to read from Spark, and you can sell them for ten as a face value of twenty. You you can make that four dollars or five dollars per by selling it to the event planner. Now they've got something wonderful to put the swag bag. All those people have your book, and you you've made something to speak, even if they don't want to pay to speak. So where do you get paid to speak? You, know, you still make a few dollars in every book, and you've got people paying attention to what you do. It's a wonderful yes. way to make some, some scratch and to get attention. You're. Your audio is a little garbled there, um, Lil, just so you, you know. But I'm um, sorry. I think we heard I mean that it. you can sell the book in the back of the room. It's hard to sell an ebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so I don't see any questions yet in the chat. So we're going to keep going and share some of the other things uh, that we wanted to share. So we've talked about what kind of book to write, um, how to get started. You just have to start. I mean, you just you can block time. Like Lil said, you can have an outline. That's what I did with my Love Yourself Successful book is I had an outline of the things that I thought I should write on. And then I had subtopics under each outline and that became the chapters and the subtopics under each chapter. Um, how to tell your story is so important. If you're not really good at telling a story, I've uh, done a lot of compilation books. I can tell you that people who write uh, their stories in some of these, not to throw this book under the, <laughs> but the Her Badass Story was a, is a great book. But these people were all first time authors and they were very traumatic stories. And some of them were, um, the way they told them, not so exciting, right? They're like, in January of 2012, I did this. In February of 2012, I did this. And da, da, da. I'm like, oh my God, ah, I'm going to pull my hair out. So we had to finesse how to tell a story a little bit. So if you're unsure, then please get some coaching around story, which is something Lil does. I don't do that. Okay. Um, yeah, we have, a, we have a question about how to pare down content uh, in the chat. Yes, how to pare uh, down. That's content. so hard. 
It's so hard. I mean, I think honestly, it's there's a, a writing. Us writers have an expression, you know, you got to be ready to kill your babies, your darlings, and that's the problem. You want to tell everybody everything, but here's the thing: what Katrina said was so important. Write two books. <laughs> so, right? If you have so much content, figure out what belongs in book one and make it a series, and then write book two. We had a wonderful book called um, "Hotel Horrors and Halos." written by a woman who's in the hotel and airline industry. And she wrote it in two books because it was too many things. And she did it alphabetically. She did the A, a through whatever is the first 13 word letters and then the last 13 letters. And she made it that way and she made two books. Now she has more than one book. So think about that. If you can't yes. pare it down, again, maybe get someone, get someone who's a, a professional, even if they just do a read of it. I'm doing that with a couple of books right now to see where the holes are, where you've, you've spoken too much, where you need to, where it's maybe you're, re, you're being redundant. Somebody can help you with that, but you also may just have two books on your hand. Yeah, I totally agree. A lot of times I do find people are redundant. Um, I just six five books, books for you. Five. <laughs> I I like five six. Books. <laughs> six. Okay. And that's okay. But right. think ahead on that when you're designing the covers and the name too, because you can make it a series, like a girl's guide to blank. A girl's guide to something else, a girl's guide to la la la, right? Or whatever divine, you know, spirit told me about this, spirit told me about that, spirit. I mean, I don't know, like whatever it is, think ahead to how it could be a series so that it's branded well. Because if you publish one and then you're like, oh, this could be a series, and then you have to fit it into what you did with the first one, you might have to revise the first one to fit. So, I mean, that's what I did with the, the Jumpstart Your Blank books is I didn't even think it would be a series in the beginning, but thank God it wasn't, it was, it was logical to just keep it. And then I have five different colors. I just changed the color of the thing. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. That's fun. So okay. Pare down content. Um, you got to get other eyeballs on it because I also, when I wrote my first book, I had told the story tw one story twice in two different sections and I didn't notice it. So <laughs> that you want to make sure that gets caught oops <laughs> what uh you know yeah that's that's it's hard that we all we all want to say all the things in one time and sometimes you just have to think it through so marcia asked about reviews so um you can get reviews ahead of time so that you can put them inside the book actually when you're printing the book because it is fun to put the reviews inside the book and on the web page to sell it but when it comes to if you're launching on amazon um if you're doing a one day and you need reviews, you need to ask a few like 10 or 12 people to actually go buy the book early, review it and put it up on Amazon early on the day. So you do need to actually ask people to do that. Someone, you know, closer to you. Um, other than that, you have, you have to ask, you have to ask for reviews. So af on your sales page, after you, they buy the book from you, if they buy it from your website, which I highly recommend, please, then on your thank you page where you say, thanks for buying my book, it'll be in the mail soon. You say, please, here's the ebook. Go read it on the ebook and review it on Amazon or whatever, or put a note in with the book when you ship it off to say, if you like this book, can you please review it on Amazon? Give us five stars and share a testimonial or whatnot. So you have to ask and you have to do that kind of marketing to get people to do that. They don't always just volunteer. <laughs> We have a, do you always do a printed copy uh, or can it only be an ebook? You can only do an ebook. Um, but the question is, what's the purpose of the book? What are you using it for? If it if it needs to just be an ebook, that's fine. No sense in not putting it up on Amazon and making some money on it rather than just handing out a PDF of it. Uh, but you certainly can do just one, right? I mean, what are your yeah. thoughts on that, Katrina? I think it does add more credibility for sure when you have a printed book. Rather than just an ebook, an ebook anybody can do an ebook and a lead magnet these days, you know. And it's a great download. So if you have a book that could be your free opt-in as the ebook, you could get people on your list with your ebook and then take them into a page to actually buy the print book. Again, I don't focus on making money with my books. Where I make the money is once they read the book or read my story or my chapter in a book, and then they decide to work with me. That's where you make the money That for most of us, okay? Now, if you want to become a fiction author or a children's book author or something with multiple books, you're going to focus on making money on your books, of course. So then it's about getting your book into bookstores and or getting bulk sales of it and all kinds of different places so that you can sell more books. But don't forget that 
even as a fiction author or a children's book author, you want to have a website, you want to build a fan base, you want to build an email list, you still have to do that. You're in business. If you have a book, give a business, period. If you have a book, give a business. So you need to build a business. You need, to, you need a website. If you don't have a business website to put your book on, then you need a book website as an author. What would you say to the business side of it all, Lil? People think that they'll go to traditional publishing and then they're just going to be famous. <laughs> and it takes years to do it and a lot of money and a lot of it costs sometimes more to create queries and to put together the promo for this book to send it out to the people that will throw it in the garbage most of the time. And if and when you get that to happen, you're they're going to put it on you to do exactly the same thing you're going to do if you self-publish. You're going to have to go out and market yourself. You're going to have to help. They may set up some book signings for you, but that's about it. And the rest of it is they take 70% of your money and you hustle. So hustle. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to hustle. Is What are you writing the book for? Like Katrina said, you have to know before you write a book, what are you writing it for? What's the purpose? Who's going to be enlightened by it who's going to enjoy it who's going to learn something from it who's the audience for it who are you and why should they listen to you what credentials do you have that bring them to you and say oh well, i'm going to listen to that person and then what's it going to do for you and that's the bigger question what is this book going to do for you and if the answer is you're going to write a book and you're going to make a million dollars sitting in your house waiting for amazon to go tick 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 and sell your books <laughs> it's not going to happen I uh -huh. wish it would. And there are occasions it does, but very, very rarely you have to get out. You want reviews? Tell everybody you know to read the book. If you're going to just do an ebook, yeah, it's a little harder. But the, here, the cool thing is if you do a print book, you can take your first chapter, turn it into a little tiny ebook, put it on your website as a lead generation and say, this is the first chapter of my book. It's free. You like it? Here's how you buy the whole book. Just give them the first chapter. Don't give them the whole book. Yeah. Give him, give him, give him 2000 words or so and say, this is really cool. Isn't it? Wouldn't you love to read the rest of it and then work with me? Great. So to do that, get, give them something as a lead generation, but you're, when you speak and get out in the speaking world and to, even if it's on podcasts or whatever, you immediately elevate your business. You immediately bring in more, more money. You make more money. Even if it's a fiction book, you got to go out and talk about it. Make a rabid fan club on Facebook that everybody loves your science fiction book or whatever it is. And they follow you around like a crazy person. I've, I've seen people with fiction books, particularly in that realm, the fantasy where they put together like yes. all kinds of swag and people get t-shirts and they're selling thousands of copies of books all on their own. It's pretty cool. Yes. And you it's can cool. make money on all that swag and all those other right. things. So you got to think outside awesome. the box, right? <laughs> and matter of fact, I'm sitting on a pillow. So this pillow... <laughs> I want it. <laughs> it's a little star. It's called Dream Star. It's my friend Candy Barone's book. She wrote a children's book and it was called Dream Star. And then she created a this to be the character. And it's actually a stuffed animal. And I use it as a back pillow because my 14 year old doesn't care about it anymore. And then she took her, her full color children's book and made it a coloring book. So she made it in black and white. So she has a regular book. She has a coloring book and she has this guy, right? And so then she sells it for $69.99 as a package or more and boom, you make a lot more money. So come on, you just got to think outside the box, right? For that Love kind that. of stuff. Love and that. While, yeah. And while Swag I'm at so it, cool. Well, is fun. <laughs> there's other small books you could write too. Like these are little square books, right? Mm -hmm. These are little square books, little skinny, uh, skinny, skinny, skinny books with tips in them. This is my client, Jennifer. She talks about getting leads with LinkedIn and these are the pages. That's it. Just little tips, 52 tips for sales success on LinkedIn. And so you, you write the book, whatever, this is many books as you can, you guys, and get them done faster because they will build your business, get you clients or get you speaking gigs or get you more credibility, but you got to do something with them, right? Yeah. You got to get them done right. You got to get them faster and then you got to do something with them and you got to learn marketing. If you don't know marketing and sales, then they're not going to go anywhere. So you got to understand the value of the right marketing and sales strategies on your website and in person. I've even gone to trade shows where I give these jumpstart your blank books away. Like I've gone the last two years in a row, I went to a conference and they said, what do you want to donate to the swag? And I, I donate books. So 200 books the first year, 400 books I gave away last October. And all the authors that were in that book, guess what? They got free promotion. And because I paid for them to include them myself. 
but nobody else gave a book. Guess who they remembered? Me, because my book was in the dang swag bag. So these are that's a marketing expense. So I spent 1700 bucks to put 400 books in the swag bags. But I've gotten clients over and over thousands and thousands of dollars because of that. Okay. Here's the thing, guys. Ready? People feel really bad about throwing out a book. They feel guilty. <laughs> they won't throw it out. They're going to throw your pen away. Your cup is going to break. The t-shirt's going to go in the drawer. And so the dog's going to be wearing it when he's cold. It's all it's going to be junk. Eventually, almost everything in your swag box is going to be junk. But they look at the book and they go, I can't throw it away. It's a book. Oh my God, I'll be I'll be a bad person. So they either give it away to someone else. It winds up on a garage sale, but it keeps going. And that book lives forever. And that's really cool. So if you can give away something, that, it might cost you almost as much to get really nice cups or t-shirts as to give away a hundred books. It's not much different in price. And that's something they'll hang on to. Yes. So I know Heidi, you had some question about the downloads and and uh, yeah, good reason to make hard copy. And, and it's cheap, you guys. Whether you print on Amazon, I, I print on Amazon. It's just super easy. Lil, probably you have a printer. Do you go to Amazon or Ingram Spark or where do you go? We Lil, do Ingram Lil? Spark. Yeah. And of course, the local printers that want to work with people locally, we, yeah. we work with that too. So there's so many ways and I, I'm all about ease. I want ease. I want it easy for me. Okay. I don't have time. I have so much going on that I have to have it as easy as possible. So if you want other ways to do things, I don't, it doesn't matter. I don't have, you don't have to do it my way. You don't have to do it Lil's way. You can do it however you want. I want to make sure before people start dropping off that Lil, you share where they can learn more from you and I'll share that. And then we'll still be taking questions. Don't worry. And I'm going to talk about the Amazon bestseller. So we'll come back. We'll, we're not going anywhere. We're here till yeah, two. Um, I'll okay. put in the chat if you want. I'll put in okay. how to do a time with me. I yeah. Lil the Ghost on Cal on Calendly. Uh, I'll put that in there. Go to Calendly and look up Lil L I L the Ghost. That's me. And uh, ghostwritersnetwork.com is our website. So it tells you our pricing on how to work with us as a a, a ghostwriter. If you need a ghostwriter or or someone to help you write a book, um, that's pretty much what we do. We we do any kind of book there is from cookbooks to children's illustrated books to all kinds of crazy stuff. So. Awesome. Okay. And you're putting that in the chat? I'm going to. Okay, good. And so, um, and so for me, I'm primarily a business coach. I do 90% of my business is all business coaching. So I like to help people make more money. So I look at the business side of it all. I have a publishing company and I'm happy to help you or answer questions, or I love to show people how to do it themselves. So if you want to self-publish, you might just need two hours of my time and I'll show you everything you need to know if you want to do it that way. You don't have to, but, um, or I have compilation books that you can write a chapter in. So you don't have to write your own full book yet. You can do a chapter in one of the compilation books. So I have a few of them going on right now, myself and my clients. Um, as you know, I run the Jumpstart Your Blank book. Uh, so I'm still looking for chapters here. So you would write whatever it is you help people jumpstart. So jumpstart your sales if you're a sales trainer, jumpstart your joy if you're a mindset coach or life coach, right? It's whatever you help people do. So the links in there are for the business site and then a call with me. So if you want to have a call with me and it says make more money in 2022, that's an old thing. Sorry. I mean, I don't want you to make more money in 2022. I want you to make more money in this year, <laughs> next year. Um, and then... Here's the publishing site also. So if you want to look around, I actually have a husband who does voiceover work. So he does audiobooks. If you want a male voice, I know a couple female audio voices too. Do you have voiceover people for your audiobooks? Because audiobooks are, are, are really hot. I think we need to talk to you about that. We have a company that we've been doing some partnering with, but I'll be honest with you guys, I think they're a little too pricey for some people. I need better alternatives and we'd love to talk to you and bring some of our people to you. Audiobooks, it's like I like to say there's three legs to the stool. You know, if you don't have the audiobook, you're going to kind of fall over. People really want to hear audiobooks. It's such a good thing. And it's there's other better ways now to do it, not so expensively, you know, and, and it's it's really wonderful. Yeah, it it is. I mean, you need some quality recording Um stuff if you're going to do it yourself. So like my love yourself successful book, I, I kind of need to do that myself, but thankfully my husband already has a closet set up. <laughs> uh, but if you don't have that closet set up, you probably need to go into a studio somewhere and do it yourself. Okay. But they're all over the country. These people that do that and uh, you have to buy time. So it is a, it is a bit of a, it's actually probably 
I mean, I can, it, it's going to cost me more to do the audiobook than it will to do any kind of print book because of all the resources I have now, unfortunately, just because you need that professional and you have to get it professionally edited by a voiceover person who knows how to take all the crackle crackle because KDP won't accept books, certain things, they won't accept it unless it's really high quality audio. So if you have any questions around that, please um, let me know. I have, like I said, uh, at least one male and two female that I know do that kind of stuff. So, cause people keep asking me and I'm like, oh, it's not on my to-do list yet to do mm -hmm. that. But, so here's the compilation link. If you guys are interested in the Jumpstart Your Blank book this year, um, again, no pressure. I know Lil, Lil does compilation books too. Differently, um, yeah, different, a different way than you do. So I don't do them the way you do. I, oh, okay. I, yeah, I help people that are doing them. So yes, come to go to go to Katrina on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So going back, <clears throat> if there's any questions on what we do, please ask. But going back to the bestseller campaign, okay, and you do those too, right, Lil? You do bestseller. We do them when we do them primarily when someone is producing a compilation book that we're helping them put together, like someone with a, like a coach who has 15 or 20 people that want, they know what they want to do. Yeah. So we help them. And then it's easier to do, obviously, when you have at least 10, 12, 15, 20 people in a book, because exponentially all these people they know will then be able to you know make it happen. You have to have a lot of people in one, on one day. That's how we do it. I think you probably have a, a different method for that. Uh, and I'm, I'll step well, aside on that one. So. Yeah, you don't have to have 5,000 downloads, however. That's that's not the right thing. So oh, it's it's actually, I can't tell you the actual number of books you have to buy. It's kind of like, we don't know. We just have to promote the heck out of it and, and then hope the stats show up. I can tell you that if you... You, if you want to be an international bestseller, then you, that means you're a bestseller in more than one country. Okay, so you need people in other countries. And I think, Karina, aren't you in the UK? Like, right, Karina? I am now, yep. Yeah, and so you find people like Karina or you go onto your Zoom calls and say, who do I know in other countries? And you're like, Karina, will you buy my book on book lunch day? And will you tell your UK friends, right? And then she'll do the same for you in the US when she has her book lunch. So you go and you find those people, you find 10 or 20 people in different countries that promise to buy your ebook or whatever that day, and then share it out to their people. And inevitably you can get there. Marlena's book went international bestseller when we did it, right? We did a launch for her, her downsizing book. And so it just, and you don't have to have multiple authors. You just have to have someone who's doing the launch that knows how to market the crap out of it. Like, okay, so yeah, it can be a solo book to do to go bestseller. I can tell you that, but you need a supporter list. So you need to to capture. Like, I'm doing one on May third. So watch my emails for May third because my client Darla's book is coming out. But we're right now, we're trying to capture all her supporters who are willing to not only buy it on launch day, but share it. So the more people that share the book launch on book launch day, the more exponentially you will get people. But that's a that's a pre-question you ask people. Yeah. Maybe find some influencers who are in the, the sphere that you are, that believe in what you're doing, and they might they might be able to help you. Exactly. Anybody Sometimes you can throw them fifty dollars and they'll help you. Some of them are very young, and fifty dollars means a lot. <laughs> so they might we just tell everybody they know, and some of those guys will do it. You know, this could be yeah. Wonderful. In the beginning, for example, I would put a quote of like I didn't know how how I would get to bestseller, so I I asked for a quote from an influential person who had a lot big list. I said, hey, if I put your quote about my book on my book cover, will you share my book out on book launch day? And guess what? Yeah, international bestseller. So, I mean, that's one way to look at it. You just creative, creative outside the box thinking. This is how it works, right? You can't be shy. No. It's tough. I know a lot of writers are shy people. They want to stay home and write. And they don't want to talk to people and they don't want to ask favors. But, you know, you have to. And you have to make those phone calls. You got to make those those email blasts. You got to get on every social media thing and tell everybody about this great book you wrote and that you're yeah. excited about. Totally. Yeah. I don't think Dion's in here anymore. Dion was in. Uh, Dion, are you here? Oh, yeah, she is. You're in Jamaica. She's in Jamaica. So we've got people all over, right? Who can help? Do we have more questions? 
What other questions do we have? What other things do you want to know about? People always ask me about pricing or costs or... Maybe you want to unmute and ask anything. I love talking to people. That's what I do all day long. I don't really work. I just I just talk to people. That's my thing. Me too. I don't. You I know? don't work. I just talk to people. Just talk to people. <laughs> well, I'm in Seminole near you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in uh, Dunedin. Like I said, we're um, Seminole's about two to three towns down. You're between me and St. Pete there, Heidi. Very cool. Yeah, we, we should have, come up, come we should up have coffee. Visit. Yes, absolutely. I want to. What was your website? Was it ghostwriters.com? Ghostwritersnetwork.com. What, I, uh, I put my link tree in there, which has okay. everything. It's got our, our marketing arm too. We have a company called Virtual Creatives, which has our, our I've owned forever, does our website stuff and all that. Good, I, she puts one link and I put 40 blurbs. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it simple. You know, it is what yeah, I, yeah, I totally. have all that stuff too. <laughs> it's all good. You should come. You should come up to Dunedin, if, but you have to drink if you come here. It's not. You're not allowed to come to town. I like oh, to say it's a bar with houses. <laughs> it's a big bar with houses. <laughs> we have eight micro. I think nine microbreweries now and thirty four thousand people. There's something wrong with that concept. <laughs> it's quite something. It's a great town. Though. We Zillow just named us number one place in America to retire to. So uh, no one can afford a house anymore. <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy, crazy. All right. So crazy. I know some of you on here also help authors. So I'm happy, you know, um, if like Karina's name says author assist, I know you do something with authors. You can put, um, you know, a little blurb in the chat if you want. I know Tom helps people, helps authors as well. And uh, Chuck helps speakers. Um, Marlena, you said you're driving, you're writing a new book right now, right? What is it called? And share you guys, so open up and share what your books are. Yeah. Um, well, the book I'm writing about is based on a true story. And it occurred when my daughter was like eight years old. And she's a central character of this book. And it's a children's book. And I actually have a 14-year-old gifted artist who's doing the illustrations. So it's like a kid writing, a, illustrating a kid's book. So I'm really thrilled about that. I'm working with him. And of course, his mom's providing a lot of support. But um at any rate, it's, the story is actually part of my legacy about how one can make a difference. So um, the working title is One Can, I Can Make a Difference. So, cool. um, very it's a very cool. simple story, but it's really deep. Yeah. So it's really meant to be for kids and, and their parents and kids of all ages. So um, it, it is part of my legacy. Yes, you have many, many books. What, seven or eight now? Yes, I have eight books. And the last um, couple of books I worked with Katrina on. And it was like a, quite an amazing experience, especially my last book, which became an international number one bestseller working with Katrina. And I had five other authors that I invited to be part of this compilation book called uh, The Secret Sauce of Downsizing. Because um, I'm... I'm kind of in that age group of people that are considering downsizing or right sizing. I'm also a realtor and I work with seniors. So it just really felt like it was um, providing a, a need for a lot of people uh, who are going through that experience. So um, yeah, I, it was just, it was first time ever working with five other authors, but everybody did their own thing. Katrina had it all organized. Like you do this, you do that. And everybody had their own timelines and we made it happen. So, so um, how are you publishing your new children's book? Well, that's going to be self-published. And um, I'm looking forward to our next call, Katrina, <laughs> because I want to find out about like next steps and publish. So yeah. I got to figure out how to publish a children's book. Okay. I'll get on it. Right. right, right. We'll, we'll help you with that. Will. Those of you might be able to help you with that. That's I a know, formatting thing. Yes. It'll be fun. You'll love we'll it. We'll get it done for you. Yeah. Katrina All can right. ask my team and they'll, they'll, they'll make it, they'll just do whatever she asks them. That's, that's, right, that's right. Great, great kids. So just great shout out for working with Katrina and making oh, you're so fun. sweet. Thank you. She's the best. Heidi, how about you? What are you working on? So I have a podcast called Animal Tales, T-A-L-E-S, and I'm an animal expert, third generation. So my podcast is tells the stories of the other, this other side of the animal industry, those who work with and care for animals, because it's such an emotional topic. So 
I, I knew I was going to write a book called Heidi Harriet's Animal Tales, but now I've broken that. I pulled everything into one document and then had to do a table of contents. And I've got enough right now for three books. So yeah. what I'm going to do is go with my story and do chapters about all the animals that, in my life. And I'm a, I'm a good storyteller. I grew up in the entertainment world. So I know I'll, it'll, I'll do my best to make it entertaining. My second book, though, evolved, Katrina, from what your Jumpstart series, because I did the speakers meeting last summer, um, a three-day thing. And yeah. so I started looking at my table of contents. I was like, well, crap, I've got all the different books. And now there's really no word count, is there? I mean, you, you held up those little square books. Kind of anything really goes doesn't it like that was a question i had about word count what is there an to be uh what's the word not uh authentic or what's the word credible does there need to be a particular word count i always thought eighty thousand or up but That's somebody will you want to take this one and then i'll follow up. <laughs> oh boy okay um it really does vary Eighty thousand is a lot of words actually yeah uh, most of our business books come into under 40,000, 30 yeah. to 40 is, is our tops. Okay. Uh, memoirs start at 60, go to whatever. Fiction books start at 80 and go to whatever. Uh, everybody know who Larry Winget is? Ever met him? He's one of Suzanne Evans's people. He worked with her a long time. Larry makes mini books. <laughs> he doesn't any longer, he's retiring, but he made these little tiny books. He sells them for $5. I don't think there's, they're like your book there, Katrina, the one you held up. I don't think they're 40 pages each, but he sells for $5 everywhere he goes. He has like, 30 of these little guys. So it really does depend on what you want to do. You're talking about, do you know the word count on what you have so far, Heidi? How many words all together? Yeah, I've got 65 just in pulling my stuff in and not really having written a lot more yet. So now I'm going to go in, but I've separated them out into my story, philosophy. I'm an animal trainer, so I'll do dog training, horse training separately. But my right. podcast is now evolving into a book Again, per Katrina's jumpstart, your, you know, underline. So I'm going to do a compilation with all the folks that have been on my podcast. Um, and so I'm excited about that, too. So yeah, that's what's kind great, of you can put a QR code to the, the podcast for each person in the book, yeah. which is what we usually yeah. do. So that's fantastic. But, you know, yeah. 65,000 words isn't ridiculous for a book of this nature. It's just you might trim that down. I mean, but it depends. I think I will, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I if think you get that, you get that down to fifty, that might be better. You got to, you want to sell the book too. You want people to buy it. You don't want it to be daunting. You want to be able to buy copies of it at a reasonable price and go sell yeah. it when you go to speak about animal training. Yeah. So the bigger and and crazier it gets, the more expensive, the more you have to charge for it. Paper and ink have right. gone up a lot. They've gone up a lot. I don't know if you've seen that, Katrina, but we're seeing pricing that is not different. It's considerably different than it was a year ago for for the the buying of books. On Ingram Spark or or I don't maybe yeah. Amazon as well, so yeah, so you know think it through. But if you have any help, we'll figure it out with you. Well, between us, I'm, I think we'll figure it out. I'm looking for help, so I will reach out. Um, this is a great resource. But the then the last question is, I I was thinking of illustrations and or pictures because again, some of the dog training and horse training is more technical. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, um, I I think in this case personally. I would say if you have really good images, high quality res, high res images, because they're real animals. It's now, now illustrate. We have several illustrators we work with who can help you with illustrations. I'm sure Katrina does as well. We do a lot of, we do a fair bit of children's illustrated books. So we have like four go-to illustrators, but it, it's, if you're looking to talk, to, what's the audience? Who's going to read this? What age group is going to read it? That's a question I have. Yeah. Um, right now I would say it's 30 to 60 year old, you know, and up women. Um, but actual I, pictures. Yeah, I want actual to pictures. that audience. Well, yeah. And if, if you're not looking at children now, you're not looking at saying this is for the little kids. I, I, I would say do actual really compelling pictures. Uh, go out and yeah. get them. Your phone can, can get a decent picture at this point. If you've got a iPhone 12 or better, you know, probably get a decent picture out. Oh, yeah. And I am going to do a coloring book. I've already got one, but cool. there's no reason not to make a kid's coloring book out of this, too, activity right. thing. Right. And then you would do, like Katrina said, do the illustrations in color, do a, a kid's book, and then black and white, only line, lines only, easy to do. You pop all the color out, and it's a coloring book. Yes. Yeah. 
Great. Thank you, Thank you guys. I like all those ideas. A couple more comments on some of that. So pictures, I have, I had a client last, the end of last year that I was doing the launch for and he said, oh, my book's done. And he sent me this manuscript and I like, um, not quite done. Um, <laughs> it had so many graphs and images and pictures in it. I was like overwhelmed. And as the reader, I don't know if I want to see all that. Stuff. And it was crazy messy. And then they were all over the place, all different sizes and he thought he was going to publish like that. And I'm like, uh, no, you're not going to publish like that. No. One thing you can do, though, is you could take all of that and put it into a workbook. And then we can just take out the pertinent questions and then drive them over to the thing to get the workbook with all the pictures and images and charts and graphs and things like that. But he did actually clean up some of the images. So we did have a lot of images in there. But one thing to look at is when you're printing, it's um, not in a children's book because that's going to be color, but a regular book is black and white inside, right? So you have to be careful of what things look like in black and white. You don't want to create them in black and white. You want to create them in color because your ebooks will be in color. So your ebooks can be in color, but your print book would be in black and white. So that's for Amazon, at least, is what I'm talking about. Um, so like he had all these shadows for different graphs and stuff like that. And it could you couldn't really tell the difference between this dark gray and that light gray. And so you got to be careful with images and coloring and and graphs and charts and too many people try to create those in word on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and then they give you the manuscript and then the book designer has to go whoop, you know shrink it down to an actual page size thing and then you can't read the font so don't create and lay out charts and fonts is my point let the layout person do it say these are the things I want in some sort of a graph or chart but you got to do that in the layout so those are my thoughts around pictures and images and things like that yeah and create a dropbox file and indicate where the, the picture is going to go exactly uh, you, you can yeah. and you know we're great you'll grayscale the, the the pictures when they're in color you yeah. can do color images in book they're just going to cost you more I mean color yeah. you know color pictures are lovely but they're going to cost you a lot more for the book which yeah. for you to buy it or for it to, to be bought. So you want to make a little money that just adjusts the price. Say, okay, the book yeah. I was going to do for 22 is going to be 27 or 30 or whatever. Yeah. And so it'll just be a little bit. I, I think most people except children's books and things where they need to be in color, right. Or photo books or whatever. I think you can create a supplemental add on download with all the beautiful color things that someone then gets on your website. So another thing you can do to pad the pages, if you have less word count, say you only have 20,000 words or 30,000 words, you know, you want to have a spine on your book. You need to have a spine where they have the, the title and the name. And in order to have a spine, you have to have, I think it's a 97 page book, like 97 physical pages of paper. Um, and so, but there's a lot of ways to, to fluff the pages. You could make a bigger font. You could put pages in between each chapter. You can do quote images in between each chapter. Um, I was trying to find some, I know I have some here, but like some of the books that I wrote have a quote page, right? So they have a quote page. You can fluff a lot of pages to make it um, more interesting. And you can add those quote unquote sales pages at the end too that can promote things um, and or review pages, praise, you know, reviews of the book. So I love the idea. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to mute you, Heidi. You just, I was trying to lower your hand and then I muted you. What do you think? Oh, sorry. No, I, I love the idea of the gallery on the website, driving people uh -huh. to the website to see the actual like color images yeah. or more that's a great idea because my world's very picturesque and visual with animals you know so you always have to be thinking how am I going to drive people from the book to my website always because otherwise they'll just read the book this is a great book okay be done and move on to the next thing and they'll never be in your world for follow-up Dion hi I'm Sunny Jamaica so <laughs> I don't have a book yet. Um, I have ideas in my head. But one of the things that I've been trying to figure out, and that's why one of the reasons I actually came to that conference where I met you, um, Katrina, is how to convert current content that I have on my blog and my magazine that I have into a book. So I have two areas that I focus on, organizing and decluttering and 
stories about women over 40. So life stories, and I use a lot of my personal experiences and those of persons I know to create my stories that I write for my blog. But I'm trying to figure out if that is a <clears throat> good way to transition into writing a book. Um, yeah. So, you want me to answer no, that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do that all the time. Um, we even work with podcasters who send us the the vocal, the, you know, the audio, and we put it out through Otter AI, and we have a book, right? So blogging, the the biggest thing again goes back to outlining what you want to slide in. So if you know your chapters, you know your sub chapters, what are your titles going to be? Then you can go find the blog that so that fits that, and you might want to still get somebody. Not might you will want to get somebody. We'll copy edit it from there and say, okay, maybe you need to trim some things down. And you can start with that yourself. Say this part of this blog fits here, but this part of this blog also may fit in this blog spot. So if you outline really well what your topics are going to be, your 10 to 12 main topics, three or four subtopics under each of those main topics, go find what you've already written. It's wow. fine to do that because you haven't published them anywhere in the world, like on Amazon or Ingram Spark or Book Baby or any of those places. Nobody's going to flag you on that or have a problem with that. Saves you a lot of time. Oh, okay. Cool. One thought for you and maybe also for Heidi, who uh, you're talking about taking stories from people that are on your blog um, and highlighting those stories in your book. Heidi, you were talking so about your story, podcast. My personal stories. Oh, your personal stories. Okay. Um, but it sparked a, a thing to... So like, Heidi, you have a podcast and you want to take those podcast guests and put them into a book. I would say, be careful with that because um, yes, you can ask for permission for them to include the book, but the way we do compilation books is we make it a revenue generating uh, business model. So right. if you just say, I'm going to turn your podcast into a book thing, and then I would expect you to do that for free because I was on your podcast. So you don't want to include people unless they pay you, in my opinion. So okay. people will pay anywhere from a thousand to say thirty-five, forty-five hundred dollars to be a part of a compilation book like that. So I've been I paid well, I've paid anywhere from ninety-seven dollars, but that book didn't go anywhere. I would, you know, and then I paid five hundred dollars and that book didn't go anywhere either. It's the ones that I invested more in that got really a lot more play, okay? So people think, oh, I'm gonna be invest cheap. No, cause then you have cheap marketing. So yeah, does that make sense? Okay, so great, thank you. Put you. A mo like you can make this a business model. People can make, you can make 20 to $40,000 if you host your own compilation book and you bring people in. It just matters of how many people you bring in and what you're charging them, right? And then you give them X number of books at the end, you do a launch, you hire someone to do a launch, right? Like I'll do a launch. Usually people charge $2,000 to do a launch. But if you're bringing money in and you have money to pay the cover designer, the editor, you have the layout person, the launch person, the marketing person, you have the money. So you take however many, much money you get, 40,000 and you take 10 or 12,000 and you put that into the payment and you make 28, $30,000. It's a great business model. I love working with people on those kinds of, because it adds to your bottom line, but it also helps so many other people get published. So any other questions? No, all your questions have been answered. You're good. <laughs> you guys have goals. You're gonna get your book done this year. I know I led a group of like five years ago, I led an author group of 30 people and 30, it was get your book done in 30 days. And there, I think there was only two people out of the 30 that got their book done in 30 days. Were you in that one, Marlena? I think you were. But and she was the one who did it. She was one a year and a half, I think everybody got their book done, which is fine. That's more of a realistic expectation. Mm -hmm. But like, let's set a goal. When is your book launch? When is it going to be done? Do you have a conference that you have to go to in the fall and you want some print books for? Then hurry up and backdate the things that you have to do, right? So set your timeline back into your timeline. Yeah, don't just say, well, I'll start writing, la, 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 three years will pass by. Set some dates and deadlines for yourself. 
and get some help from me, Lil, and whoever else you need. If you need other oh, resources, the universe. <laughs> reach out, okay? Um, we're happy to be a resource for you. Absolutely. Okay, good. Let Thank you see. for this. This is awesome. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for participating and asking questions because otherwise we'd be talking to a bunch of black squares. <laughs> that was a great little group. So glad you all came. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Yes. All right. Well, I'll put the recording up if you need to hear anything else and I'll send a link as, as long as you're registered because I did send this link out to a few clients. So as long as you're registered, I'll get the link out to you. I don't, I'm not going to send it out to the whole list again, but cool. Save the chat in case you need us. Can I get Lil's email? Sorry, because the chat, I had to change screens and the chat went away. Oh, maybe copy and paste it again, Lil. Sure. Let Thank me put you. that in there. And it's the easiest email for me is my marketing company which I've owned for many, many years, more longer than even the one I'm in the uh, writing company. So it's a little at virtual creatives. I'm writing it down for you in the chat. Thank you so much. Okay, good. Oh, thanks, Miriam, for sharing. Even though you're not on video, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, good. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful Western week. Thanks, Lil. Thank you so much, Katrina. You're awesome. You are too. <laughs> Bye.